Suhih al-Bukhari, The Book of As-Salah, The Prayer Chapter on how As-Salah, the prayer, was prescribed on the night of Al-Isra, miraculous night journey of the Prophet peace be upon him to Jerusalem and then to the heavens. Ibn Abbas said, Abu Sufyan, when telling the narrations of Heraclius, mentioned, The Prophet peace be upon him ordered us to offer our salah regularly and to be true and chaste. Narrated Abu Dhar, may Allah be pleased with him. Allah's Messenger, peace be upon him, said, While I was at Mecca, the roof of my house was opened, and Jibreel, Gabriel, descended, opened my chest, and washed it with zamzam water. Then he brought a golden tray, full of wisdom and faith, and having poured its contents into my chest, he closed it. Then he took my hand and ascended with me to the nearest heaven. When I reached the nearest heaven, Jibril said to the gatekeeper of the heaven, Open the gate. The gatekeeper asked, Who is it? Jibril answered, Jibril. He asked, Is there anyone with you? Jibril replied, Yes, Muhammad peace be upon him is with me. He asked, Has he been called? Jibril said, Yes. So the gate was opened, and we went over the nearest heaven, and there we saw a man sitting with Aswitha, a large number of people on his right, and Aswitha, a large number of people on his left. When he looked towards his right, he laughed, and when he looked towards his left, he wept. Then he said, Welcome, O pious prophet and pious son. I asked Jibril, Who is he? He replied, He is Adam, peace be upon him and the people on his right and left are the souls of his offspring. Those on his right are the people of paradise, and those on his left are the people of hell. And when he looked towards his right, he laughed, and when he looked towards his left, he wept. Then he ascended with me till he reached the second heaven, and he, Jibril, said to its gatekeeper, Open the gate. The gatekeeper said to him the same as the gatekeeper of the first heaven had said, and he opened the gate. Anas said, Abu Dhar added, the Prophet peace be upon him met Adam, Idris, Musa, Moses, Isa, Jesus, and Ibrahim, Abraham, peace be upon them. He, Abu Dhar, did not mention on which heaven they were, but he mentioned that he, the Prophet peace be upon him, met Adam on the nearest heaven and Ibrahim on the sixth heaven. Anna said, When Jibreel, along with the Prophet peace be upon him, passed by Idris, the latter said, Welcome, O pious Prophet and pious brother. The Prophet peace be upon him asked, Who is he? Jibreel replied, He is Idris. The Prophet peace be upon him added, I passed by Musa and he said, Welcome, O pious Prophet and pious brother. I asked Jibreel, Who is he? Jibreel replied, He is Musa. Then I passed by Isa, and he said, Welcome, O pious brother and pious prophet. I asked, Who is he? Jibreel replied, He is Isa, Jesus, peace be upon him. Then I passed by Ibrahim, and he said, Welcome, O pious prophet and pious son. I asked Jibreel, Who is he? Jibreel replied, He is Ibrahim, peace be upon him. The Prophet, peace be upon him, added, Then Jibreel ascended with me to a place where I heard the creaking of the pens. Ibn Hazm and Anas bin Malik said, The Prophet, peace be upon him, said, Then Allah enjoined fifty salah on my followers. When I returned with the order of Allah, I passed by Musa, who asked me, What has Allah enjoined on your followers? I replied, He has enjoined fifty salah on them. Musa said, Go back to your Lord and appeal for reduction, for your followers will not be able to bear it. So I went back to Allah and requested for reduction, and he reduced it to half. When I passed by Musa again and informed him about it, he said, Go back to your Lord, as your followers will not be able to bear it. So I returned to Allah and requested for further reduction, and half of it was reduced. I again passed by Musa 
And he said to me, Return to your Lord, for your followers will not be able to bear it. So I returned to Allah, and he said, These are five salah, and they are all equal to fifty in reward, for my word does not change. I returned to Musa, and he told me to go back once again. I replied, Now I feel shy of asking my Lord again. Then Jibreel took me till we reached Sidratul Muntaha, low tree of the utmost boundary, which was shrouded in colors indescribable. Then I was admitted into paradise where I found small walls made of pearls, and its earth was of musk, a kind of perfume. Narrated Aisha, may Allah be pleased with her, the mother of believers. Allah enjoined a salah when he enjoined it. It was two rakar only in every salah, both when in residence or during a journey. Then the salah offered during a journey remained the same, but the rakar of salah for non-travelers were increased. Chapter on It is obligatory to wear clothes while offering a salah. And the statement of Allah, Take your adornment by wearing your clean clothes covering completely the awrah. It means, while offering salah, a male must cover himself with clothes from umbilicus of his abdomen up to his knees. And it is better that both his shoulders should be covered. And a female must cover all her body and feet, except face. And it is better that her both hands are also covered, while praying and going round. The Tawaf of the Karba Quran Chapter 7 Verse 31 An offering salah while wearing a single garment wrapped round the body. Salma bin al-Aqwa narrated. The Prophet peace be upon him said, He should pin it, even if with a thorn. Offering salah with the same garment in which one has had sexual intercourse is permissible, if one does not see anything dirty on it. The Prophet peace be upon him ordered that no one should go around the Kaaba, perform thawbaf in a naked state. Footnote Regarding the statement, If she can cover all her body with one garment, it is sufficient, means, It is agreed by the majority of the religious scholars that a woman, while offering salah, should cover herself completely, except her face, and it is better that she should cover her hands with gloves or cloth, etc. But her feet must be covered, either with a long dress or she must wear socks to cover her feet. This verdict is based on the Prophet's statement, Abu Daud. Narrated Ummi Atliyah, may Allah be pleased with her, we were ordered to bring out our menstruating women and veil women in the religious gatherings and invocation of Muslims on the two Eid festivals. These menstruating women were to keep away from their musallah. A woman asked, O Allah's Messenger, what about one who does not have a veil? He said, Let her share the veil of her companion. Chapter on to tie Izar, dress worn below the waist at one's back while offering salah. Sahal said, Some people offered salah with the Prophet peace be upon him with their Izar tied on their necks. Narrated Muhammad bin al Munqadir. Once Jabir, may Allah be pleased with him, offered salah with his Izar tied to his back while his clothes were lying beside him on a wooden peg. Somebody asked him, Do you offer your salah in a single izar? He replied, I did so to show it to the one with no sense like you. Had any one of us two garments in the lifetime of the Prophet peace be upon him? Narrated Muhammad bin al munqadir I saw Jabir bin Abdullah, may Allah be pleased with them, offering salah in a single garment, and he said, that he had seen the Prophet, peace be upon him, offering salah in a single garment. Chapter on to offer a salah with a single garment wrapped round the body. Ummi Hani, may Allah be pleased with her, said that the Prophet, peace be upon him, wrapped his body with a single garment and crossed its ends over his shoulders. Narrated Umar bin Abi Salama, may Allah be pleased with him. The Prophet, peace be upon him, offered salah in one garment and crossed its ends. Narrated Umar bin Abi Salama, I saw the Prophet peace be upon him offering salah in a single garment in the house of Umm Salama. May Allah be pleased with her, and he had crossed its ends around his shoulders. Narrated Umar bin Abi Salama, May Allah be pleased with him. In the house of Umm Salama, may Allah be pleased with her, I saw Allah's Messenger peace be upon him offering salah 
wrapped in a single garment around his body, with its ends crossed round his shoulders. Narrated Abu Murrah, the freed slave of Ummihani, may Allah be pleased with her, Ummihani, the daughter of Abi Talib, said, I went to Allah's Messenger, peace be upon him, in the year of the conquest of Mecca, and found him taking a bath, and his daughter, Fatima, was screening him. I greeted him. He asked, Who is she? I replied, I am Ummihani bint Abi Talib. He said, Welcome, O Ummihani. When he finished his bath, he stood up and prayed eight rakar while wearing a single garment wrapped round his body. When he finished, I said, O Allah's Messenger, my brother has told me that he will kill a person whom I gave shelter, and that person is so and so, the son of Hubayra. The Prophet, peace be upon him, said, We shelter the person whom you have sheltered. Ummihani added, And that was before noon. Duha. Narrated Abu Huraira, May Allah be pleased with him. A person asked Allah's Messenger, peace be upon him, about the offering of a salah in a single garment. Allah's Messenger, peace be upon him, replied, Has every one of you got two garments? Chapter on If someone offers salah wrapped in a single garment, he should cross its corners round his shoulders. Narrated Abu Huraira, may Allah be pleased with him. The Prophet, peace be upon him, said, None of you should offer salah in a single garment that does not cover one's shoulders. Narrated Abu Huraira, may Allah be pleased with him. Allah's Messenger, peace be upon him, said, Whoever offers salah in a single garment must cross its ends over the shoulders. Chapter on If the Garment is Tight Over the Body Narrated Sa'id bin al-Harith, I asked Jabir bin Abdullah, may Allah be pleased with them, about offering salah in a single garment. He said, I traveled with the Prophet peace be upon him during some of his journeys, and I came to him at night for some purpose, and I found him offering salah. At that time, I was wearing a single garment, with which I covered my shoulders and offered salah by his side. When he finished the salah, he asked, O oh Jabir, what has brought you here? I told him what I wanted. When I finished, he asked, O oh Jabir, what is this garment which I have seen and with which you covered your shoulders? I replied, It is a tight garment. He said, If the garment is large enough, wrap it around the body, covering the shoulders. And if it is tight, too short, then use it as an izar. Tie it around your waist only. Narrated Sahal, may Allah be pleased with him. The men used to offer salah with the Prophet peace be upon him, with their izar, lower half body cover sheet, tied around their necks, as boys used to do so. Therefore, the Prophet peace be upon him told the women not to raise their heads from prostration, till the men sat down straight while praying. Chapter on to offer salah in a Syrian cloak made by infidels. al Hassan said that there was no harm in wearing clothes woven by a Magian. And Marmar said that he had seen a Zuhri wearing Yemenite garments dyed with urine. And Ali offered salah in a new unwashed garment. Narrated Mughira bin Shurba, may Allah be pleased with him, once I was traveling with the Prophet peace be upon him, and he said, O Mughira, take this container of water. I took it, and Allah's Messenger, peace be upon him, went far away till he disappeared. He answered the call of nature, and he was wearing a Syrian cloak. He tried to take out his hands from its sleeves, but it was very tight, so he took out his hands from under it. I poured water, and he performed ablution like that for soda, and passed his wet hands over his khuf, leather socks, and then offered soda. Chapter on It is Disliked to be Naked During a Sala, The Prayers Narrated Jabir bin Abdullah, may Allah be pleased with them. While Allah's Messenger, peace be upon him, was carrying stones along with the people of Mecca for the building of the Kaaba, wearing an idhar, waist sheet, lower half body cover, his uncle, Al-Abbas, said to him, O oh my nephew, it would be better if you take off your idhar and put it over your shoulders underneath the stones. So he took off his idhar, and put it over his shoulders, but he fell unconscious, and since then he had never been seen naked. Chapter on to offer salah with a shirt, trousers, a thuban, or a qaba, an outer garment with full length sleeves. Narrated Abu Huraira, may Allah be pleased with him, 
A man stood up and asked the Prophet peace be upon him about offering salah in a single garment. The Prophet peace be upon him said, Has every one of you got two garments? A man put a similar question to Umar, on which he replied, When Allah makes you wealthier, then you should clothe yourself properly during salah. Otherwise, one can offer salah with an izar and a rida, a sheet covering the upper part of the body, izar and a shirt, izar and a qaba, trousers and a rida, trousers and a shirt, or trousers and a qaba, thuban and a qaba, or thuban and a shirt. The narrator added, I think that he also said a thuban and a rida. Footnote The word thuban means shorts that covers the knee. Narrated Ibn Umar, may Allah be pleased with them, a person asked Allah's Messenger, peace be upon him, what should a muhrim wear? He, peace be upon him, replied, he should not wear shirts, trousers, a burnus, a hooded cloak, or clothes which are stained with saffron or wars, a kind of perfume. Whoever does not find a sandal to wear can wear khuf, but these should be cut short so as not to cover the ankles. Chapter on what may be used to cover the private parts of the body. Narrated Abu Sa'id al-Khudri, may Allah be pleased with him. Allah's Messenger, peace be upon him, forbade ishtimal al samma wrapping one's body with a garment so that one cannot raise its end or take one's hand out of it. He also forbade al ihtiba sitting on buttocks with knees close to abdomen and feet apart with the hands circling the knees while wrapping oneself with a single garment without having a part of it over the private parts. Narrated Abu Huraira, may Allah be pleased with him. The Prophet peace be upon him forbade two kinds of sails, that is, al-limas and al-nabad. The former is a kind of sail in which the deal is completed if the buyer touches a thing without seeing or checking it properly. And the latter is a kind of sail in which the deal is completed when the seller throws a thing towards the buyer, giving him no opportunity to see touch or check it. And the Prophet peace be upon him forbade also ishtimal al samma and al ihtiba in a single garment. Narrated Abu Huraira, may Allah be pleased with him. On the day of Nahar, 10th of Dhul Hijjah, in the year prior to the last Hajj of the Prophet peace be upon him, when Abu Bakr was the leader of the pilgrims in that Hajj, Abu Bakr sent me along with other announcers to Mina to make a public announcement, proclaiming, No mushrik, polytheist, pagan, idolater, and disbeliever in the oneness of Allah and in his messenger Muhammad peace be upon him, is allowed to perform Hajj after this year, and no naked person is allowed to perform the Tawaf around the Kaaba. Then Allah's messenger peace be upon him sent Ali to read out Surah Al-Bara, At-Tawbah, to the people. So he made the announcement along with us on the day of Nahr in Mina. No mushrik, polytheist, pagan, idolater, and disbeliever, in the oneness of Allah and in his messenger Muhammad peace be upon him, is allowed to perform Hajj after this year, and no naked person is allowed to perform the Tawaf around the Kaaba. Chapter to Pray Without a Rida Narrated Muhammad bin al-Munqadir I went to Jabir bin Abdullah, may Allah be pleased with them, and he was offering salah prayer wrapped in a garment, and his rida was lying beside him. When he finished the salah, I said, O Abdullah, you offer salah in a single garment, while your rida is lying beside you. He replied, Yes, I did it intentionally, so that the ignorant ones like you might see me. I saw the Prophet, peace be upon him, offering salah, prayer, like this. Chapter on what is said about the thigh Narrated Ibn Abbas and Jarhad and Muhammad bin Jahsh. The Prophet peace be upon him said, The thigh is awrah. That is, it is illegal to keep it bare. And Anas bin Malik said, The Prophet peace be upon him uncovered his thigh. The narration of Anas is dependable, but it would be safer to take Jarhad's narration into consideration in order to get rid of the difference between them. Abu Musa said, the Prophet peace be upon him covered his knees when Uthman entered. Zayd bin Thabit said, Divine revelation came to Allah's Messenger peace be upon him while his thigh was on my thigh.
and it became so heavy that I was afraid that it might break my thigh. Narrated Abdul Aziz, Anas, may Allah be pleased with him, said, When Allah's Messenger, peace be upon him, invaded Khaybar, we offered the Fajr prayer there, early in the morning, when it was still dark. Allah's Prophet, peace be upon him, rode, and Abu Talha rode too, and I was riding behind Abu Talha. Allah's Prophet, peace be upon him, passed through the lane of Khaybar, quickly, and my knee was touching the thigh of Allah's Prophet, peace be upon him. Then his thigh was uncovered by the shift of his idhar, waist sheet, and I saw the witness of the thigh of Allah's Prophet, peace be upon him. When he entered the town, he said, Allahu Akbar, Khaybar is ruined. Whenever we approach near a hostile nation to fight, then evil will be the mourning of those who have been warned. He repeated this thrice. The people came out for their jobs, and some of them said, Muhammad has come along with his army. We conquered Khaybar, took the captives, and the booty was collected. Dehiya came and said, O Allah's Prophet, give me a slave girl from the captives. The Prophet, peace be upon him, said, Go and take any slave girl. He took Sofia bin Tihuji. A man came to the Prophet, peace be upon him, and said, O Allah's Messenger, you gave Sofia bin Tihuji to Dihya, and she is the chief mistress of the ladies of the tribes of Quraiza and another. She befits none but you. So the Prophet, peace be upon him, said, Bring him along with her. So Dihya came with her, and when the Prophet, peace be upon him, saw her, he said to Dihya, Take any slave girl other than her from the captives. Anas added, The Prophet, peace be upon him, then manumitted her and married her. Thabit asked Anas, O Abu Hamza, what did the Prophet, peace be upon him, pay her as mahar? He said, She herself was her mahar, for he, peace be upon him, manumitted her and then married her. Anas added, While on the way, Umm Sulaim dressed her for marriage ceremony, and at night, she sent her as a bride to the Prophet, peace be upon him. So the Prophet, peace be upon him, was a bridegroom, and he said, Whoever has anything, food, should bring it. He spread out a leather sheet for the food, and some broad dates and others cooking butter. I think he, Anas, mentioned a sawil. So they prepared a dish of hais, a kind of meal, and that was walima, the marriage banquet of Allah's Messenger, peace be upon him. Chapter on in how many what sort of clothes a woman should offer salah, prayer. Ikrama said, If she can cover all her body with one garment, it is sufficient. Footnote. Regarding the statement, if she can cover all her body with one garment, it is sufficient, means, it is agreed by the majority of the religious scholars that a woman, while offering salah, should cover herself completely, except her face and it is better that she should cover her hands with gloves or cloth, etc. But her feet must be covered either with a long dress or she must wear socks to cover her feet. This verdict is based on the Prophet's statement, Abu Da'ud. Narrated Aisha, may Allah be pleased with her, Allah's Messenger, peace be upon him, used to offer the Fajr prayer, and some believing women covered with their veiling sheets used to attend the Fajr prayer with him and then they would return to their homes unrecognized. Chapter on if a person offered salah, prayer, in a dress with marks, and looked at those marks during the salah. Narrated Aisha, may Allah be pleased with her, the Prophet peace be upon him offered salah, prayer, in a khamisla, a square garment, having marks. During the salah he looked at its marks. So when he finished the salah he said, Take this khamisla of mine to Abu Jaham and get me his ambijaniya, a woolen garment without marks, as it, the khamisla, has diverted my attention from the salah. Narrated Aisha, may Allah be pleased with her, the Prophet peace be upon him said, I was looking at its khamisla's marks during the salah, and I was afraid that it may put me in trial by diverting my attention. Chapter on if someone offers salah, prayer, in a garment bearing marks of cross or pictures, will the salah be annulled, and what is forbidden thereof? Narrated Anas, Raisha, may Allah be pleased with her, had a qirab, a thin marked woolen curtain, with which she had screened one side of her home. The Prophet peace be upon him said, Take away this qiram of yours, 
as its pictures are still displayed in front of me during my salah. Prayer, that is, did divert my attention from the salah. Chapter on whoever offered salah, prayer, in a silk faruj, an outer garment opened at the back, and then took it off. Narrated Uqba bin Amr, may Allah be pleased with him, the Prophet, peace be upon him, was given a silken faruj as a present. He wore it while offering salah. When he had finished his salah, prayer, he took it off violently, as if with a strong aversion to it, and said, It is not the dress of al-muttaqoon. Al-muttaqoon means those pious and righteous persons who fear Allah much, abstain from all kinds of sins and evil deeds which he has forbidden, and love Allah much, do all kinds of good deeds which he has ordained. Chapter on It is Permissible to Offer Salah, Prayer in a Red Garment Narrated Abu Juhayfa I saw Allah's Messenger, peace be upon him, in a red leather tent. And I saw Bilal, may Allah be pleased with him, taking the remaining water with which the Prophet, peace be upon him, had performed ablution. I saw the people taking the utilized water impatiently, and whoever got some of it rubbed it on his body, and those who could not get any took the moisture from the other's hands. Then I saw Bilal carrying an anaza, a spearheaded stick, which he planted in the ground. The Prophet, peace be upon him, came out, tucking up his red cloak, and led the people in salah, and offered two rak'ah facing the Kaaba, taking anaza as a sutra for his salah. I saw the people and animals passing in front of him beyond the anaza. Chapter on It is Permissible to Offer Salah, Prayer on Roofs, a Pulpit or Wood. Al Hassan finds no objection for one to offer salah, prayer, over snow or bridges, even if urine were flowing underneath, or over, or in front of them, as long as there was a sutra, an object put in front of the praying person to act as symbolic barrier between him and others, in front of the person. Abu Huraira, may Allah be pleased with him, offered salah on the roof of the mosque with the Imam, and Ibn Umar, may Allah be pleased with him, offered salah on snow. Narrated Abu Hazim, Sahal bin Sa'ad was asked about the Prophet's, peace be upon him, pulpit, as to what thing it was made of. Sahal replied, None remains alive amongst the people, who knows about it better than I. It was made of tamarisk, wood of the forest. So and so, the slave of so and so, prepared it for Allah's Messenger, peace be upon him. When it was constructed and placed in the mosque, Allah's Messenger, peace be upon him, stood on it, facing the Qibla, and said, Allahu Akbar, and the people stood behind him, and he led the people in salah, prayer, he, peace be upon him, recited and bowed, and the people bowed behind him. Then he raised his head and stepped back, got down and prostrated on the ground, and then he again ascended the pulpit, recited, bowed, raised his head and stepped back, got down and prostrated on the ground. So this is what I know about the pulpit. Ahmad bin Hanbal said, As the Prophet, peace be upon him, was at a higher level than the people, there is no harm according to the above-mentioned hadith. If the Imam is at a higher level than his followers during the prayers. Narrated Anas bin Malik, may Allah be pleased with him, Once Allah's Messenger, peace be upon him, fell off a horse, and his leg or shoulder got injured. He swore that he would not go to his wives for one month, and he stayed in a mashraba, attic room having stairs made of date palm trunks. So, his companions came to visit him, and he led them in salah, prayer, sitting, whereas his companions were standing. When he finished the salah, he said, Imam is meant to be followed. So when he says, Allahu Akbar, say, Allahu Akbar. And when he bows, bow. And when he prostrates, prostrate. And if he offers salah standing, offer salah standing. After the twenty-ninth day, the Prophet, peace be upon him, came down from the attic room, and the people asked him, O Allah's Messenger, you swore that you will not go to your wives for one month. He said, The month is of twenty-nine days. Footnote This order is abrogated by the last action of the Prophet, peace be upon him, when he offered salah sitting, while his companions, followers, were praying standing. Please see Hadith number 689. Chapter on if the clothes of a praying person in prostration test his wife, would that make his salah, prayer, invalid? 
narrated Maymuna, may Allah be pleased with her. Allah's Messenger, peace be upon him, was offering salah, prayer, while I was sitting beside him during my menses, and sometimes his clothes would touch me during his prostration. Maymuna, may Allah be pleased with her, added, he prayed on a khumrah, a small mat hardly sufficient for the face and the hands, while prostrating during salah. Chapter on to offer a salah, prayer, on the hasir, a mat that is made of the leaves of date palm trees, and is as long as, or longer than, a man's stature. Jabir and Abu Sa'id offered salah, prayer, standing on board a ship. al Hassan said, If it is not hard for one's companions, one may offer salah standing, and turn himself with its ship's turnings. Otherwise, pray sitting. Narrated Anas bin Malik, May Allah be pleased with him. My grandmother, Mulaika, invited Allah's Messenger, peace be upon him, for a meal, which he herself had prepared. He, peace be upon him, ate from it, and said, Get up, I will lead you in salah, prayer. Anas added, I took my hasir, washed it with water, as it had become dark because of prolonged use, and Allah's Messenger, peace be upon him, stood on it. The orphan and I aligned behind him, and the old lady, Mulaika, stood behind us. Allah's Messenger, peace be upon him, led us in the salah and offered two rak'ah and then left. Chapter on to offer a salah, prayer, on a khumrah, a small mat, hardly sufficient for the face and hands while prostrating during salah. Narrated Maymuna, may Allah be pleased with her, Allah's Messenger, peace be upon him, used to offer a salah, prayer, on a khumrah. Chapter on to offer a salah, prayer, on the bed. Anas offered salah, prayer, on his bed. Anas said, We used to offer a salah, the prayer, with the Prophet peace be upon him, and prostrate on our clothes. Narrated Aisha, may Allah be pleased with her, the wife of the Prophet peace be upon him. I used to sleep in front of Allah's Messenger peace be upon him, and my legs were opposite his qibla, and in prostration he pushed my legs, and I withdrew them, and when he stood, I stretched them. Aisha, may Allah be pleased with her, added, In those days, the houses were without lights. Narrated Aisha, may Allah be pleased with her, Allah's Messenger, peace be upon him, offered salah, prayer, while I was lying like a dead body on his family bed between him and his qibla. Narrated Urwa, may Allah be pleased with him, the Prophet, peace be upon him, offered salah, prayer, while Aisha, may Allah be pleased with her, was lying between him and his qibla on the bed on which they used to sleep. Chapter on to prostrate on a garment in scorching heat. al Hassan said, People used to prostrate on their turbans and head covers with their hands in their sleeves because of scorching heat. Narrated Anas bin Malik, may Allah be pleased with him, we used to offer sada, prayer, with the Prophet peace be upon him, and some of us used to place the ends of their clothes at the place of prostration because of scorching heat. Chapter on to offer salah, prayer, with the shoes on. Narrated Abu Maslama, Sa'id bin Yazid al-Azdi, saying, I asked Anas bin Malik whether the Prophet, peace be upon him, had ever offered salah, prayer, with his shoes on. He replied, yes. Chapter on to offer salah, prayer, wearing khuf. Leather socks. Narrated Ibrahim. Hammam bin al Haris said, I saw Jarir bin Abdullah passing urine, and there he performed ablution and passed his wet hands over his khufayn, two leather socks, stood up and offered salah, prayer. He was asked about it. He replied that he had seen the Prophet peace be upon him doing the same. They approved of this narration as Jarir was one of those who embraced Islam very late. Narrated al mughira bin Shurba, may Allah be pleased with him, I helped the Prophet peace be upon him in performing ablution, and he passed his wet hands over his khufayn, two leather socks, and prayed. Chapter on If Someone Does Not Prostrate Properly Narrated Hudhaifa that he saw a person bowing and prostrating imperfectly. When he finished his salah, prayer, Hudhaifa told him that he had not offered salah, the sub-narrator added, I think that Huzaifa also said, Were you to die, you would die on a sunnah, legal way, other than that of Muhammad peace be upon him.
Chapter on During Prostration One Should Show His Armpits and Separate His Forearms from His Body Narrated Abdullah bin Malik bin Buhayna Whenever the Prophet peace be upon him offered salah, prayer, during prostration he used to separate his arms from his body so widely that the whiteness of his armpits was visible. Chapter on Superiority of Praying Facing the Qibla with the Toes Toward It as Well Abu Hamid said that, referring to what the Prophet peace be upon him said or used to do. Narrated Anas bin Malik, may Allah be pleased with him. Allah's Messenger peace be upon him said, Whoever offers salah, prayer, like us, and faces our qibla, Kaaba at Mecca during salah and eats our slaughtered animals, is a Muslim and is under Allah's and his Messenger's protection. So do not betray Allah by betraying those who are in his protection. Narrated Anas bin Malik, may Allah be pleased with him, Allah's Messenger peace be upon him said, I have been ordered to fight the people till they say, La ilaha illallah, none has the right to be worshipped but Allah, and if they say so, offer prayers like our salah, prayers, face our qibla, Kaaba at Mecca during prayer, and slaughter as we slaughter, then their blood and property will be sacred to us. And we will not interfere with them except legally, and their reckoning will be with Allah. Narrated by Moon bin Siyah that he asked Anas bin Malik, O Abu Hamza, what makes the life and property of a person sacred? He replied, Whoever says, La ilaha illallah, none has the right to be worshipped but Allah, faces our qibla, Garba at Mecca, during the prayers, offers prayers like us, and eats our slaughtered animal then he is a Muslim and has got the same rights and obligations as other Muslims have. Chapter on the Qibla for the people of al Madina, Sham, and the East The Qibla is neither to the East nor to the West for the people of al Madina, as the Prophet peace be upon him said to them. Do not face Qibla, Garba at Mecca, during defecation and urination in an open space. Face either East or West. Narrated Abu Ayyub al-Ansari, may Allah be pleased with him, the Prophet peace be upon him said, While defecating, neither face nor turn your back to the Qibla, Kaaba at Mecca, but face either east or west. Abu Ayyub added, When we arrived in Sham, we came across some lavatories facing the Qibla, therefore we turned ourselves while using them and asked for Allah's forgiveness. Chapter on the Statement of Allah and take you people, the maqam, place of Ibrahim, Abraham, or the stone on which Abraham, peace be upon him, stood while he was building the Kaaba, as a place of prayer, for some of your salah, for example, to Raqqa after the Qawaf of Kaaba. Quran, chapter 2, verse 125. Narrated Amr bin Dinar, I asked Ibn Umar, can a person who has performed the tawaf around the Kaaba for Umrah, but has not performed the tawaf, Sa'i, going of as safa and Al-Marwa, have a sexual relation with his wife? Ibn Umar replied, When the Prophet, peace be upon him, reached Mecca, he performed the tawaf around the Kaaba, circumambulated it seven times, and offered a two-rakar, sada, prayer, at the place behind the maqam, place of Ibrahim, Abraham, and then performed the tawaf, Sa'i, going of As-Safa and Al-Marwa. And verily, in Allah's Messenger, peace be upon him, you have a good example to follow. Then we put the same question, as in the above hadith number 395, to Jabir bin Abdullah, and he too replied, he should not go near his wife for sexual relation, till he has finished the Qawaf, Sa'i, going of As-Safa and Al-Marwa. Narrated Mujahid Someone came to Ibn Umar and said, here is Allah's Messenger, peace be upon him, entering the Kaaba. Ibn Umar said, I went there, but the Prophet, peace be upon him, had come out of the Kaaba, and I found Bilal standing between its two doors. I asked Bilal, Did the Prophet, peace be upon him, offer salah, prayer, in the Kaaba? Bilal replied, Yes. He prayed to Raqqa'ah between the two pillars, which are to your left on entering the Kaaba. Then Allah's Messenger, peace be upon him, came out and offered a two rakar salah facing the Kaaba. Narrated Ibn Abbas, may Allah be pleased with him, when the Prophet, peace be upon him, entered the Kaaba, 
he invoked Allah in each and every side of it, and did not offer salah, prayer, till he came out of it, and offered a two raka prayer facing the Kaaba and said, This is the Qibla. Footnote The word Qibla means the direction in which all Muslims turn their faces in salah, prayer, and that direction is towards the Kaaba in Mecca, Saudi Arabia. The narration of Bilal, hadith number 397, is more authentic as Ibn Abbas did not enter the Kaaba with the Prophet peace be upon him, but narrates the episode from another companion. Chapter on During the Obligatory Salah, Prayer, One Should Face the Qibla, Kaaba at Mecca, wherever one may be. Narrated Abu Huraira, may Allah be pleased with him, the Prophet peace be upon him said, Face the Qibla, Kaaba at Mecca, and say Allahu Akbar. Narrated Bara bin Azib, may Allah be pleased with them. Allah's Messenger peace be upon him offered salah, prayer, facing Baytul Maqdis, Jerusalem, for 16 or 17 months, but he loved to face the Kaaba at Mecca. So Allah revealed, Verily, we have seen the turning of your Muhammad's, peace be upon him, face towards the heaven. Quran, chapter 2, verse 144. So the Prophet, peace be upon him, faced the Kaaba, and the fools amongst the people, namely the Jews, said, What has turned them from their Qibla? Prayer direction towards Jerusalem, Bayt al Maqdas, to which they used to face in prayer. Allah revealed, Say, O Muhammad, peace be upon him, to Allah belong both east and the west. He guides whom he wills to the straight path. Quran, chapter 2, verse 142. A man offered salah with the Prophet, peace be upon him, facing the Kaaba, and went out. He saw some of the Ansar offering the Asr prayer with their faces towards Bayt al Maqdas. He said, I bear witness that I offered salah with Allah's Messenger, peace be upon him, facing the Kaaba. So, all the people turned their faces towards the Kaaba at Mecca. Narrated Jabir, may Allah be pleased with him. Allah's Messenger, peace be upon him, used to offer salah, prayer, optional, non-obligatory prayer while riding on his mount, Rahila, wherever it turned, and whenever he wanted to offer the compulsory salah, he dismounted and prayed facing the Qibla, Garba at Mecca. Narrated Abdullah, may Allah be pleased with him, the Prophet, peace be upon him, offered salah, prayer, and the sub-narrator Ibrahim said, I do not know whether he prayed more or less than usual, and when he had finished salah, he was asked, O Allah's Messenger, peace be upon him, has there been any change in the as the prayers? He said, What is it? The people said, You have prayed so much and so much. So the Prophet, peace be upon him, bent his legs, faced the Qibla, Garba, at Mecca, and performed two prostrations of Sahab, and finished his prayers with Taslim, by turning his face to right and left, saying, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. When he turned his face to us, he said, If there had been anything changed in Salah, surely I would have informed you. But I am a human being like you, and liable to forget like you. So if I forget, remind me. And if any one of you is doubtful about his Salah, he should follow what he thinks to be correct, and complete his Salah accordingly, and finish it, and perform two prostrations of Sahab. Chapter on what has been said about facing the Qibla Garba at Mecca, and whoever considered that there was no need to repeat the salah prayer if someone offered prayers by mistake facing a direction other than that of the Qibla. When the Prophet peace be upon him did taslim after offering two rakah of Dhuhr prayer, he then faced the people and then completed the rest of the prayer. Narrated Umar ibn al-Khattab, may Allah be pleased with him, my Lord agreed, accepted my invocation with me in three things. One, I said, O Allah's Messenger, I wish we took the maqam, place of Ibrahim, Abraham, as our praying place for some of our salah, prayers. So came the divine revelation. And take, you people, the maqam, place of Ibrahim, or the stone on which Ibrahim, peace be upon him, stood while he was building the Kaaba, as a place of prayer for some of your prayers. For example, to Rakar after the Tawaf of Kaaba. Quran, chapter 2, verse 125. 
2. And as regards the verse of the veiling of the women, I said, O Allah's Messenger, I wish you ordered your wives to cover themselves from the men, because good and bad ones talk to them. So the verse of the veiling of the women was revealed. Quran, chapter 24, verse 31, and chapter 33, verse 59. 3. Once the wives of the Prophet peace be upon him made united front against the Prophet peace be upon him, and I said to them, It may be if he, the Prophet peace be upon him, divorced you all, that his Lord, Allah, will give him instead of you wives better than you. So this verse, Quran, chapter 66, verse 5, the same as I had said, was revealed. Narrated Abdullah bin Umar, may Allah be pleased with them, while the people were offering the Fajr prayer at Quba near al Madina, someone came to them and said, It has been revealed to Allah's Messenger, peace be upon him, tonight, and he has been ordered to offer prayer facing the Kaaba. So turn your faces to the Kaaba. Those people were facing Sham, Jerusalem, so they turned their faces towards Kaaba at Mecca. Narrated Abdullah, may Allah be pleased with him, once the Prophet, peace be upon him, offered five raqah in Zuhr prayer. He was asked, Is there an increase in the raqah of salah? Prayers. The Prophet, peace be upon him, said, And what is it? They said, You have offered five raqah. So he bent his legs and performed two prostrations of sahab. Chapter on to scrape off the sputum from the mosque with the hand using some tool or other or using no tool. Narrated Anas bin Malik, may Allah be pleased with him, the Prophet peace be upon him saw some sputum in the direction of the qibla on the wall of the mosque and he disliked that and the sign of disgust was apparent from his face. So he got up and scraped it off with his hand and said, Whenever any one of you stands for the salah, prayer, he is speaking in private to his Lord, or his Lord is between him and his Qibla. So none of you should spit in the direction of the Qibla, but one can spit to the left or under his foot. The Prophet peace be upon him then took the corner of his sheet and spat in it and folded it and said, Or you can do like this. Narrated Abdullah bin Umar, may Allah be pleased with them. Allah's Messenger peace be upon him saw sputum on the wall of the mosque in the direction of the Qibla and scraped it off. He faced the people and said, Whenever any one of you is offering salah, prayers, he should not spit in front of him, because in the prayer, Allah is in front of him. Narrated Aisha, may Allah be pleased with her, the mother of faithful believers. Allah's Messenger, peace be upon him, saw some nasal secretions, expectoration or sputum on the wall of the mosque in the direction of the Qibla and scraped it off. Chapter on to scrape the nasal secretion off the mosque with gravel. And Ibn Abbas said, If you tread on any wet, filthy thing, wash it away. And if it is dry, don't wash it. Narrated Abu Huraira and Abu Sa'id, may Allah be pleased with them, Allah's Messenger, peace be upon him, saw some expectoration on the wall of the mosque. He took gravel and scraped it off and said, If any one of you wanted to spit, he should neither spit in front of him nor on his right, but he could spit either on his left or under his left foot. Chapter on It is Forbidden to Spit on the Right Side While in Salah Prayers Narrated Abu Huraira and Abu Sa'id, may Allah be pleased with them, Allah's Messenger, peace be upon him, saw some expectoration on the wall of the mosque. He took gravel and scraped it off and said, If any one of you wanted to spit, he should neither spit in front of him nor on his right, but could spit either on his left or under his left foot. Narrated Anas, may Allah be pleased with him. The Prophet, peace be upon him, said, None of you should spit in front or on his right, but he could spit either on his left or under his foot. Chapter on One Should Spit on the Left Side or Under One's Left Foot Narrated Anas bin Malik, may Allah be pleased with him. The Prophet, peace be upon him, said, A faithful believer while in a salah, the prayer, is speaking in private to his Lord, so he should neither spit in front of him nor to his right side, but he could spit either on his left or under his foot. Narrated Abu Sa'id, may Allah be pleased with him. The Prophet, peace be upon him, saw sputum on the wall of the mosque in the direction of the Qibla and scraped it off with gravel. 
then he forbade spitting in front or on the right, but allowed it on one's left or under one's left foot. Chapter on the Expiation for Spitting in the Mosque Narrated Anas bin Malik, may Allah be pleased with him, the Prophet peace be upon him said, Spitting in the mosque is a sin, and its expiation is to bury it. Chapter on the Bearing of the Expectoration in the Mosque Narrated Abu Huraira, may Allah be pleased with him, the Prophet peace be upon him said, If any one of you stands for a salah, the prayer, he should not spit in front of him, because in salah, prayer, he is speaking in private to Allah, and he should not spit on his right, as there is an angel, but can spit either on his left or under his foot and bury it. That is the expectoration. Chapter on If the spit or sputum comes out suddenly, then one should spit in the corner of one's garment. Narrated Anas, may Allah be pleased with him. The Prophet peace be upon him saw expectoration on the wall of the mosque in the direction of the Qibla and scraped it off with his hand. It seemed that he disliked it and the sign of disgust was apparent from his face. He said, If any one of you stands for offering prayer, he is speaking in private to his Lord, or his Lord is between him and his Qibla. Therefore, he should not spit towards his Qibla, but he could spit either on his left or under his foot. Then he, peace be upon him, took the corner of his sheet and spat in it, folded it, and said, Or, do like this. Chapter on preaching of the Imam to the people regarding the proper offering of a salah, the prayer, and the mention of the Qibla, Kaaba at Mecca. Narrated Abu Huraira, may Allah be pleased with him, Allah's Messenger peace be upon him said, Do you consider or see that my face is towards the Qibla, Kaaba at Mecca? By Allah, neither your submissiveness nor your bowing is hidden from me. Surely, I see you from my back. Narrated Anas bin Malik, may Allah be pleased with him. The Prophet peace be upon him led us in a salah, prayer, and then got up on the pulpit and said, In your salah and rukur, bowing, I certainly see you from my back, as I see you while looking at you. Chapter on It is Permissible to Say Masjid, Mosque of Bani So and So. Narrated Abdullah bin Umar, may Allah be pleased with them, Allah's Messenger, peace be upon him, ordered for a horse race. The trained horses were to run from a place called Al-Hafiyah to Thaniyatul Wada, and the horses, which were not trained, were to run from a Thaniyah to the Masjid, Mosque of Bani Zuraid. The sub-narrator added, Ibn Umar was one of those who took part in the race. Chapter on the distribution of goods or wealth and the hanging of a cluster of dates in the mosque. Narrated Anas, May Allah be pleased with him. Some goods or wealth was brought to Allah's Messenger, peace be upon him, from Bahrain. The Prophet, peace be upon him, ordered the people to spread them in the mosque. It was the biggest amount of goods or wealth Allah's Messenger, peace be upon him, had ever received. He left for a salah, the prayer, and did not even look at it. After finishing a salah, he sat by those goods or wealth and gave from those to everybody he saw. Al Arbas came to him and said, O Allah's Messenger, give me something too, because I gave ransom for myself and Aqil. Allah's Messenger, peace be upon him, told him to take. So he stuffed his garment with it and tried to carry it away, but he failed to do so. He said, O Allah's Messenger, order someone to help me in lifting it. The Prophet, peace be upon him, refused. He then said to the Prophet, peace be upon him, Will you please help me to lift it? Allah's Messenger, peace be upon him, refused. Then Al-Abbas threw some of it and tried to lift it, but failed. He again said, O Allah's Messenger, order someone to help me to lift it. He refused. Al-Abbas then said to the Prophet, peace be upon him, Will you please help me to lift it? He, peace be upon him, again refused. Then Al-Abbas threw some of it and lifted it on his shoulders and went away. Allah's Messenger, peace be upon him, kept on watching him till he disappeared from his sight and was astonished at his greediness. Allah's Messenger, peace be upon him, did not get up till the last coin was distributed. Chapter on Receiving an Invitation to Dinner in the Mosque and Accepting It Narrated Anas, may Allah be pleased with him, 
I found the Prophet peace be upon him in the mosque along with some people. He said to me, Did Abu Talha send you? I said, Yes. He said, For a meal? I said, Yes. Then he said to his companions, Get up. They set out, and I was ahead of them. Chapter on to give the judicial verdicts in the mosque and to perform the Allah'an between men and women, husbands and wives there. Footnote. The word Allah'an means an oath which is taken by both the wife and the husband when he accuses his wife of committing illegal sexual intercourse. The Quran, Surah An-Nur, Chapter 24, Verse 6 to 9. Narrated Sahal bin Sa'ad, may Allah be pleased with him, a man said, O Allah's Messenger, if a man finds another man with his wife committing adultery, should the husband kill him? Later on, I saw them, the man and his wife, doing li'an in the mosque. Chapter on if someone enters a house, should he offer prayers where he likes, or as he is told, and he should not look out to seek information about the place or do spying. Narrated Uthban bin Malik, May Allah be pleased with him, the Prophet peace be upon him, came to my house and said, Where do you like me to offer salah, prayers? I pointed to a place. The Prophet peace be upon him then said, Allahu Akbar, and we aligned behind him, and he offered a two rakar prayer. Chapter on about taking the mosques in the houses. And Al-Bara bin Azib offered salah, prayers, in the mosque in his house with other people in congregation. Narrated Ithban bin Malik, may Allah be pleased with him, who was one of the companions of Allah's Messenger peace be upon him, and one of the Ansar who took part in the battle of Badr. I came to Allah's Messenger peace be upon him and said, O Allah's Messenger, I have weak eyesight, and I lead my people in salah, prayers. When it rains, the water flows in the valley between me and my people so I cannot go to their mosque to lead them in salah. O Allah's Messenger, I wish you would come to my house and offer salah in it, so that I could take that place as a musalla, appointed place for salah. Allah's Messenger, peace be upon him, said, If Allah will, I will do so. Next day, after the sun rose high, Allah's Messenger, peace be upon him, and Abu Bakr came, and Allah's Messenger, peace be upon him, asked for permission to enter. I gave him permission, and he did not sit on entering the house, but said to me, Where do you like me to offer salah? I pointed to a place in my house. So Allah's Messenger, peace be upon him, stood there and said, Allahu Akbar. And we all got up and aligned behind him and offered a two rakar prayer and ended it with taslim. We requested him to stay for a meal called khazira, which we had prepared for him. Many members of our family gathered in the house and one of them said, Where is Malik bin ad or Ibn ad One of them replied, He is a hypocrite and does not love Allah and his messenger. Hearing that, Allah's messenger, peace be upon him, said, Do not say so. Haven't you seen that he said, La ilaha illallah, none has the right to be worshipped but Allah, for seeking Allah's countenance, that is, for Allah's sake only. He said, Allah and his messenger know better. We have seen him helping and advising hypocrites. Allah's Messenger, peace be upon him, said, Allah has forbidden the hellfire for those who say, La ilaha illallah. None has the right to be worshipped but Allah, for seeking Allah's countenance. That is, for Allah's sake only. Chapter on while entering the mosque, etc. One should start with the right foot. And Abdullah bin Umar, used to enter the mosque by putting in his right foot first, and while leaving he used to put out his left foot first. Narrated Aisha, may Allah be pleased with her, the Prophet peace be upon him used to start everything from the right side, whenever it was possible in all his affairs, for example, in washing, combing, or wearing shoes. Chapter on Is it permissible to dig the graves of pagans of the period of ignorance, and to use that place as a mosque? And the saying of the Prophet, peace be upon him, Allah cursed the Jews, because they built the places of worship at the graves of their prophets. And what is said regarding the disapproval of offering salah, prayers, at graves. And Umar saw Anas bin Malik offering salah at a grave and shouted, The grave, 
the grave, meaning do not offer salah there, but he did not order him to repeat his salah. Narrated Aisha, may Allah be pleased with her. Ummi Habiba and Ummu Salama, may Allah be pleased with them, mentioned about a church they had seen in Ethiopia in which there were pictures. They told the Prophet about it, on which he, peace be upon him, said, If any religious man dies amongst those people, they would build a place of worship at his grave and make these pictures in it. They will be the worst creature with Allah on the day of resurrection. Narrated Anas, may Allah be pleased with him. When the Prophet, peace be upon him, arrived at al Madina, he dismounted at the upper side of al Madina amongst the tribe called Bani Amr bin Arouf. He stayed there for fourteen nights. Then he sent for Bani al Najjar, and then came armed with their swords. As if I am looking just now, as the Prophet, peace be upon him, was sitting over his Rahila mount with Abu Bakr riding behind him, and all Bani al Najjar around him, till he dismounted at the courtyard of Abu Ayyub's house. The Prophet, peace be upon him, loved to offer salah, prayer, whenever the time for salah was due, even at sheepfolds. Later on, he ordered that a mosque should be built and sent for some people of Bani al Najjar and said, O Bani al Najjar, suggest to me the price of this walled piece of land of yours. They replied, No, by Allah, we do not demand its price except from Allah. Anas added, There were graves of pagans in it, and some of it was unleveled, and there were some date palm trees in it. The Prophet, peace be upon him, ordered that the graves of the pagans be dug out, and the unleveled land be leveled, and the date palm trees be cut down. So all that was done. They aligned these cut date palm trees towards the qibla of the mosque, as a wall, and they also built two stone side walls of the mosque. His companions brought the stones while reciting some poetic verses. The Prophet, peace be upon him, was with them, and he kept on saying, there is no goodness except that of the hereafter. O Allah, so please forgive the Ansar and al muhajira the immigrants. Chapter on to offer salah, the prayer in a sheepfold. Narrated Abu Tayyah. Anas, may Allah be pleased with him, said, The Prophet, peace be upon him, offered salah, prayer, in the sheepfold. Later on, I heard him saying, He, Peace be upon him offered salah in the sheep folds before the construction of the mosque. Chapter on to offer a salah, the prayer in the camel yards, the places where the camels are stationed. Narrated Nafir, I saw Ibn Umar, may Allah be pleased with them, offering salah, prayer, while taking his camel as a sutra in front of him. And he said, I saw the Prophet, peace be upon him, doing the same. Chapter on whoever offered salah. Prayer, with furnace or fire or any other worshipable thing in front of him, but he intended salah solely for Allah. Az-Zuhri narrated that Anas said that the Prophet, peace be upon him, said, While I was offering salah, prayer, the hell fire was displayed in front of me. Narrated Abdullah bin Abbas, may Allah be pleased with them, the sun eclipsed, and Allah's Messenger, peace be upon him, offered the eclipse prayer and said, I have been shown the hellfire now, and I never saw a worse and horrible sight than the sight I have seen today. Chapter on the Dislikeness of Offering a salah the Prayers in Graveyards Narrated Ibn Umar, may Allah be pleased with them, the Prophet peace be upon him said, Offer some of your salah, prayers, nawafil at home, and do not take your houses as graves. Chapter on what is said about offering salah, prayer, at the places where the earth had sunk down and Allah's punishment had fallen. It is said that Ali, may Allah be pleased with him, disliked offering salah, the prayers in the land of Babylon, which had sunk down. Narrated Abdullah bin Umar, may Allah be pleased with them, Allah's Messenger, peace be upon him, said, Do not enter the places of those people where Allah's punishment had fallen unless you do so weeping. If you do not weep, do not enter the places of these people, because Allah's curse and punishment which fell upon them may fall upon you. Chapter on to offer a salah, the prayer, in a church or in a temple, etc. Umar, may Allah be pleased with him, said, 
We do not enter your churches because of the statues and pictures. Ibn Abbas used to offer salah prayers in the church provided there were no statues in it. Narrated Aisha, may Allah be pleased with her. Umar Salama told Allah's Messenger, peace be upon him, about a church which she had seen in Ethiopia and which was called Maria. She told him about the pictures which she had seen in it. Allah's Messenger, peace be upon him, said, If any righteous, pious man dies amongst them, they would build a place of worship at his grave and make these pictures in it. They are the worst creatures with Allah. Chapter on Prohibition of Building the Places of Worship at the Graves of Prophets Narrated Aisha and Abdullah bin Abbas, may Allah be pleased with them. When the last moment of the life of Allah's Messenger, peace be upon him, came, he started putting his khamisa, a woolen blanket, on his face, and when he felt hot and short of breath, he took it off his face and said, May Allah curse the Jews and Christians, for they build the places of worship at the graves of their prophets. The Prophet, peace be upon him, was warning Muslims of what those people had done. Narrated Abu Huraira, may Allah be pleased with him, Allah's Messenger, peace be upon him, said, May Allah's curse be on the Jews, for they built the places of worship at the graves of their prophets. Chapter on the saying of the Prophet, peace be upon him, The earth has been made for me a masjid, place of praying, and a thing to purify, to perform the yamum. Narrated Jabir bin Abdullah, may Allah be pleased with them. Allah's Messenger, peace be upon him, said, I have given five things which were not given to any amongst the prophets before me. These are, 1. Allah made me victorious by awe, by his frightening my enemies for a distance of one month's journey. 2. The earth has been made for me and for my followers, a masjid, place for praying, and a thing to purify, perform tayammum. Therefore, any one of my followers can offer prayers wherever he is, at the time of Asada. Prayer. 3. The booty has been made halal, lawful to me, and was not made so to anyone else. 4. Every prophet used to be sent to his nation only, but I have been sent to all mankind. 5. I have been given the right of intercession on the day of resurrection. Chapter on Sleeping of a Woman in the Mosque and residing in it. Narrated Aisha, may Allah be pleased with her. There was a black slave girl belonging to an Arab tribe, and they manumitted her, but she remained with them. The slave girl said, Once one of their girls of that tribe came out wearing a red leather scarf decorated with precious stones. It fell off from her, or she placed it somewhere. A kite passed by that place, saw it lying there, and mistaking it for a piece of meat, flew away with it. Those people searched for it, but they did not find it. So, they accused me of stealing it, and started searching me, and even searched my private parts. The slave girl further said, By Allah, while I was standing in that state with those people, the same kite passed by them and dropped the red scarf, and it fell amongst them. I told them, This is what you accused me of stealing and I was innocent, and now here it is. Aisha added, That slave girl came to Allah's Messenger, peace be upon him, and embraced Islam. She had a tent or a small room with a low roof in the mosque. Whenever she called on me, she had a talk with me, and whenever she sat with me, she would recite the following. The day of the scarf, band, was one of the wonders of our Lord. Verily, he rescued me from the disbelievers' town. Aisha added, Once I asked her, What is the matter with you? Whenever you sit with me, you always recite these poetic verses. On that, she told me the whole story. Chapter on Sleeping of Men in the Mosque And narrated Anas, Some people of the tribe of Urqul came to the Prophet, peace be upon him, and joined the men of as sufa Abdul Rahman bin Abi Bakr said, Ashab as sufa Sufa companions were poor people. Narrated Nafir, Abdullah bin Umar, may Allah be pleased with them, said, I used to sleep in the mosque of the Prophet, peace be upon him, while I was young and unmarried. 
Narrated Sahal bin Sa'ad, may Allah be pleased with him. Allah's messenger, peace be upon him, went to Fatima's house, but did not find Ali there. So he asked, Where is your cousin? She replied, There was something between us, and he got angry with me and went out. He did not sleep. Midday nap in the house. Allah's messenger, peace be upon him, asked a person to look for him. That person came and said, O Allah's messenger, he, Ali, is sleeping in the mosque. Allah's messenger, peace be upon him, went there, and Ali was lying. His rida, a garment covering the upper part of the body, had fallen down to one side of his body, and he was covered with dust. Allah's messenger, peace be upon him, started cleaning the dust from him, saying, Get up, O Abu Turab, get up, O Abu Turab, literally means, O father of dust. Narrated Abu Huraira, may Allah be pleased with him, I saw seventy of us Sufa men, and none of them had a rida, a garment covering the upper part of the body. They had either idhar only, or sheets which they tied round their necks. Some of these sheets reached the middle of their legs, and some reached their heels, and they used to gather them, sheets with their hands, lest their private parts should become bare. Chapter on to offer a salah, the prayer, when returning from a journey. Ka'ab bin Malik said, Whenever the Prophet, peace be upon him, returned from a journey, he entered the mosque and offered prayers in it. Narrated Jabir bin Abdullah, May Allah be pleased with them. I went to the Prophet, peace be upon him, in the mosque. The sub-narrator, Mis'ar, thought that Jabir said, In the forenoon. He ordered me to offer to Raqqa a prayer. He owed me some money, and he repaid it to me and gave more than what was due to me. Chapter on if one entered a mosque, one should offer to Raqqa, Tahiyyat al-Masjid, before sitting. Narrated Abu Qatada al-Salami. May Allah be pleased with him. Allah's Messenger, peace be upon him, said, If any one of you enters a mosque, he should offer to Raqqa, Tahiyyat al-Masjid, prayer, before sitting. Chapter on al-Hadath, passing wind in the mosque. Narrated Abu Huraira, may Allah be pleased with him, Allah's Messenger, peace be upon him, said, The angels keep on asking Allah's forgiveness for any one of you, as long as he is at his musalla, praying place, and he does not pass wind, hadath. They say, O Allah, forgive him. O Allah, be merciful to him. Chapter on the Construction of the Prophets, peace be upon him, Mosque. Abu Sa'id said, the roof of the mosque was made of the leaves of date palms. Umar ordered the Prophet's, peace be upon him, mosque to be expanded, built, and said, Protect the people from rain. Beware of red and yellow decorations, for they put the people to trial. Anas, reciting a part of a hadith, said, They will boast of them, mosques, rather than coming frequently to them for offering prayers. Ibn Abbas said, You, Muslims will surely decorate your mosques as the Jews and Christians decorated their churches and temples. Narrated Abdullah bin Umar, may Allah be pleased with them, in the lifetime of Allah's Messenger, peace be upon him, the Prophet's mosque was built of adobes, its roof of the leaves of date palms, and its pillars of the trunks of date palms. Abu Bakr did not alter it. Umar expanded it on the same pattern as it was in the lifetime of Allah's Messenger, peace be upon him, by using adobes, leaves of date palms, and changing the pillars into wooden ones. Uthman changed it by expanding it to a great extent, and built its walls with engraved stones and lime, and made its pillars of engraved stones, and its roof of teak wood. Chapter on to cooperate in building a mosque. It is not for Mushrikun, polytheists, idolaters, pagans, disbelievers in the oneness of Allah, to maintain the mosques of Allah, that is, to pray and worship Allah therein, to look after their cleanliness and their building, while they witness against their own selves of disbelief. The works of such are in vain, and in fire shall they abide. The mosques of Allah shall be maintained only by those who believe in Allah, and the last day, perform salah, iqam salah, and give dhakat, and fear none but Allah. It is they who are on true guidance. Quran, chapter 9, 
verse 17 and 18. Narrated Ikrama, Ibn Abbas said to me and to his son Ali, Go to Abu Sa'id and listen to what he narrates. So we went and found him in a garden looking after it. He picked up his rida, wore it, and sat down and started narrating till he came to the topic of the construction of the Prophet's mosque. He said, We were carrying one adobe at a time while our mar was carrying two. The Prophet peace be upon him saw him and started removing the dust from his body and said, May Allah be merciful to our mar. He will be inviting them, that is, his murderers, the rebellious group, to paradise, and they will invite him to hellfire. Umar said, I seek refuge with Allah from al fitn trials and afflictions. Chapter on employing the carpenter and the technical hand, artisan in making the wooden pulpit or building the mosque. Narrated Sahel, may Allah be pleased with him. Allah's Messenger, peace be upon him, sent someone to a woman telling her to order her slave, carpenter, to prepare a wooden pulpit for him to sit on. Narrated Jabir, may Allah be pleased with him, a woman said, O Allah's Messenger, shall I get something constructed for you to sit on, as I have a slave who is a carpenter? He replied, Yes, if you will. So she got that pulpit constructed. Chapter on the Superiority of Whoever Built a Mosque Narrated Ubaidullah al Khawlani. I heard Uthman bin Affan, may Allah be pleased with him, saying, When people argued too much about his intention to reconstruct the mosque of Allah's Messenger, peace be upon him, you have talked too much. I heard the Prophet, peace be upon him, saying, Whosoever built a mosque, Bukair thought that Asim, another sub narrator, added, With the intention of seeking Allah's countenance, that is, his pleasure. Allah will build for him a similar place in paradise. Chapter on while passing through a mosque, one should better hold the arrowheads with the hand. Narrated Jabir bin Abdullah, may Allah be pleased with them, a man passed through the mosque carrying arrows. Allah's messenger peace be upon him said to him, Hold them, the arrows, by their heads. Chapter on passing through a mosque is permissible. Narrated Abu Burda bin Abdullah on the authority of his father. The Prophet peace be upon him said, Whoever passes through our mosques or markets with arrows should hold them, the arrows, by their heads lest he should injure a Muslim. Chapter on what is said about reciting poetry in the mosque. Narrated Hassan bin Thabit al-Ansari. May Allah be pleased with him. I asked Abu Huraira. May Allah be pleased with him. By Allah, Tell me the truth, whether you heard the Prophet, peace be upon him, saying, O Hassan, reply on behalf of Allah's Messenger, peace be upon him. O Allah, help him with the Ruh al-Qudus, Jibril, Gabriel. Abu Huraira said, Yes. Chapter on the presence of spearmen with their spears in the mosque is permissible. Narrated Aisha, may Allah be pleased with her, once I saw Allah's Messenger, peace be upon him, at the door of my house, while some Ethiopians were playing in the mosque, displaying their skill with spears. Allah's Messenger, peace be upon him, was screening me with his rida, so as to enable me to see their display. Urwa said that Aisha, may Allah be pleased with her, added, I saw the Prophet, peace be upon him, while the Ethiopians were playing with their spears. Chapter on mentioning about sales and purchases on the pulpit in the mosque. Narrated Aisha, may Allah be pleased with her. Barida came to seek my help regarding her manumission. I told her, If you like, I would pay your price to your masters, but your alwala would be for me. Her master said, If you like, you can pay what remains of the price of her manumission. Sufyan, the sub-narrator once said, Or, if you like, you can manumit her, but her alwala would be for us. When Allah's Messenger, peace be upon him, came, I spoke to him about it. He said, Buy her and manumit her. No doubt, Al-Wala is for the manumitter. Then Allah's Messenger, peace be upon him, stood on the pulpit, or Allah's Messenger, peace be upon him, ascended the pulpit as Sufyan once said, and said, What about some people who impose conditions which are not present in Allah's book, laws? Whoever imposes conditions which are not in Allah's book, laws, his conditions will be invalid even if he imposed them a hundred times.
Footnote. Alwala is a kind of relationship between the master who freed a slave and the freed slave. Chapter on asking a debtor to repay what he owes and catching the debtor in the mosque. Narrated Garb, may Allah be pleased with him. In the mosque, I asked Ibn Abi Hadrad to pay the debts which he owned to me and our voices grew louder. Allah's Messenger, peace be upon him, heard that while he was in his house. So he came to us, raising the curtain of his room, and said, O Garb, I replied, Labaik, O Allah's Messenger. He said, O Garb, reduce your debt to half, gesturing with his hand. I said, O Allah's Messenger, I have done so. Then Allah's Messenger, peace be upon him, said to Ibn Abi Hadrad, Get up and pay the debt to him. Chapter on Sweeping, Cleaning of the Mosque and Removing Rags dirt, and sticks from it. Narrated Abu Huraira, may Allah be pleased with him, a black man or a black woman used to clean, sweep, the mosque, and he or she died. The Prophet, peace be upon him, asked about her or him. He was told that she or he had died. He said, Why did you not inform me? Show me his grave or her grave. So he went to her, his grave, and offered her his funeral prayer. Chapter on the order of banning the trade of alcoholic drinks was issued in the mosque. Narrated Aisha, may Allah be pleased with her, when the verses of Surah Al-Baqarah about al-riba, usury, were revealed, the Prophet, peace be upon him, went to the mosque and recited them in front of the people, and then banned the trade of alcoholic drinks. Footnote, al-riba, usury, which is of two major kinds, riba nasiyah, that is, interest on lent money. Riba fadl, that is, taking a superior thing of the same kind of goods by giving more of the same kind of goods of inferior quality. That is, dates of superior quality for dates of inferior quality in greater amount. Islam strictly forbids all kinds of usury. Chapter on Servants for the Mosque Ibn Abbas referred to the verse, I have vowed to you, what the child that is in my womb to be dedicated for your services, free from all worldly work, to serve your place of worship. Quran, chapter 3, verse 35. Narrated Abu Rafir, Abu Huraira, may Allah be pleased with him, said, A man or a woman used to clean the mosque. A sub-narrator said, Most probably a woman. Then he narrated the hadith of the Prophet, peace be upon him, where it is mentioned that he offered her funeral prayer at her grave. Chapter on to fasten a prisoner or a debtor in the mosque. Narrated Abu Huraira, the Prophet peace be upon him said, Last night a big ifrit, demon, from the jinns came to me and wanted to interrupt my as the prayers, or said something similar. But Allah enabled me to overpower him. I wanted to fasten him to one of the pillars of the mosque so that all of you could see him in the morning. But I remembered the statement of my brother Suleiman, Solomon, as stated in the Quran. My Lord, forgive me and bestow upon me a kingdom such as shall not belong to any other after me. Quran, chapter 38, verse 35. The sub-narrator, Ruh, said, He, the demon, was dismissed humiliated. Chapter on to take a bath on embracing Islam and fasten a prisoner in the mosque. Shuraih used to order the offender or debtor to be fastened to one of the pillars of the mosque. Narrated Abu Huraira, may Allah be pleased with him, the Prophet peace be upon him sent some horsemen to Najd, and they brought a man called Thumama bin Uthal from Bani Hanifa. They fastened him to one of the pillars of the mosque. The Prophet peace be upon him came and ordered them to release him. He, Uthal, went to a garden of date palms near the mosque, took a bath, and entered the mosque again and said, La ilaha illallah wa anna Muhammad rasulullah. None has the right to be worshipped but Allah, and Muhammad is the messenger of Allah. That is, he embraced Islam. Chapter on to pitch a tent in the mosque for patients, etc. Narrated Aisha, may Allah be pleased with her, on the day of Al-Khandaq, Battle of the Trench, 
The medial arm artery or vein of Sa'ad bin Mu'adh was injured and the Prophet peace be upon him pitched a tent in the mosque to look after him. There was another tent of Bani Ghifar in the mosque and the blood started flowing from Sa'ad's tent to the tent of Bani Ghifar. They shouted, O occupants of the tent, what is coming from you to us? They found that Sa'ad's wound was bleeding profusely and Sa'ad died in his tent. Chapter on to take the camel inside the mosque if necessary. And Ibn Abbas said, The Prophet peace be upon him performed the tawaf while riding a camel. Narrated Umm Salama, I complained to Allah's Messenger peace be upon him that I was sick. He told me to perform the tawaf behind the people while riding. So I did so, and Allah's Messenger peace be upon him was offering salah, prayer, beside the Kaaba, and reciting the surah starting from وَالطُورِ وَكِتَابٌ مَسْطُورٌ سورة الطور قرآن Chapter No. 52 Chapter on Miracle of Two Lights Like Lamps Narrated Anas bin Malik, may Allah be pleased with him, two of the companions of the Prophet peace be upon him departed from him on a dark night and were led by two lights like lamps going in front of them from Allah as a miracle, lighting the way in front of them. And when they parted, each of them was accompanied by one of these lights till they reached their respective houses. Chapter on al khawqa A Small Door and a Bath in the Mosque Narrated Abu Sa'id al-Khudri, may Allah be pleased with him, the Prophet peace be upon him addressed the people and said, Allah gave a choice to one of his slaves either to choose this world or what is with him in the hereafter. He chose the latter. Abu Bakr wept. I said to myself, why is this Shaykh weeping? If Allah gave choice to one of his slaves either to choose this world or what is with him in the hereafter and he chose the latter and that slave was Allah's messenger peace be upon him himself. Abu Bakr knew more than us. The Prophet peace be upon him said, O Abu Bakr, don't weep. The Prophet peace be upon him added, Abu Bakr has favored me much with his property and company. If I were to take a Khalil from mankind, I would certainly have taken Abu Bakr, but the Islamic Brotherhood and friendship is sufficient. Close all the gates in the mosque except that of Abu Bakr. Footnote Khalil The one whose love is mixed with one's heart, and it is superior to a friend or beloved. The Prophet peace be upon him had only one Khalil, that is Allah, but he had many friends. Narrated Ibn Abbas, may Allah be pleased with them, Allah's Messenger, peace be upon him, in his fatal illness, came out with a piece of cloth, tied around his head, and sat on the pulpit. After thanking and praising Allah, he said, There is no one who had done more favor to me with his life and his property than Abu Bakr bin Abi Quhafa. If I were to take a Khalil, I would certainly have taken Abu Bakr, but the Islamic Brotherhood is better. Close all the khawkha, small door, in this mosque except that of Abu Bakr. Chapter on the Doors and Locks of the Kaaba and the Mosques Narrated Ibn Juraj, Ibn Abi Mulaika said to me, O Abdul Malik, I wish that you had seen the mosque of Ibn Abbas and its doors. Narrated Nafir, Ibn Umar, may Allah be pleased with them, said, The Prophet peace be upon him had arrived at Mecca and sent for Uthman bin Talha. He opened the gate of the Kaaba, and the Prophet peace be upon him, Bilal, Uthama bin Zayd and Uthman bin Talha entered the Kaaba, and then they closed its door from inside. They stayed there for an hour, and then came out. Ibn Umar added, I quickly went to Bilal and asked him whether the Prophet, peace be upon him, had offered salah, prayer. Bilal replied, He offered salah in it. I asked, Where? He replied, Between the two pillars. Ibn Umar added, I forgot to ask how many rakar he the Prophet, peace be upon him, had prayed in the Garba. Chapter on the Entering of a Pagan in the Mosque Narrated Abu Huraira, may Allah be pleased with him, Allah's Messenger, peace be upon him, sent some horsemen to Najd, and they brought a man called Thumama bin Uthal from Bani Hanifa. They fastened him to one of the pillars of the mosque. Chapter on Raising the Voice in the Mosque Narrated as Sa'ib bin Yazid I was standing in the mosque and somebody threw a gravel at me. I looked and found that he was Umar ibn al-Khattab. May Allah be pleased with him. 
he said to me, Fetch those two men to me. When I did, he said to them, Who are you, or where do you come from? They replied, We are from Fa'if. Umar said, Were you from this city, al Madina? I would have punished you for raising your voices in the mosque of Allah's Messenger, peace be upon him. Narrated Ka'b bin Malik, May Allah be pleased with him. During the lifetime of Allah's Messenger, peace be upon him, I asked Ibn Abi Hadrad in the mosque to pay the debts which he owed to me, and our voices grew so loud that Allah's Messenger, peace be upon him, heard them while he was in his house. So he came to us after raising the curtain of his room. The Prophet, peace be upon him, said, O Ka'b bin Malik, I replied, Labaik, O Allah's Messenger. He gestured with his hand to me to reduce the debt to half. I said, O Allah's Messenger, I have done it. Allah's Messenger, peace be upon him, said to Ibn Hadrad, Get up and pay it. Chapter on the Religious Gatherings in Circles and Sitting in the Mosque Narithid Nafir, Ibn Amr, may Allah be pleased with them, said, While the Prophet, peace be upon him, was on the pulpit, a man asked him how to offer the night salah, prayers. He replied, Pray two rakah at a time and then two, and then two, and so on. And if you're afraid of the dawn, the approach of the time of the Fajr prayer, pray one rakah, and that will be the withr for all the rakah which you have offered. Ibn Umar said, Make an end of your tahajjud, night salah, with an odd rakah, for the Prophet, peace be upon him, ordered it to be so. Narrated Ibn Umar, may Allah be pleased with them, a man came to the Prophet, peace be upon him, while he was delivering a religious talk, and asked him about how to offer the night salah, prayer. The Prophet, peace be upon him, replied, Pray two rakah at a time, and then two, and then two, and so on. And if you're afraid of dawn, the approach of the time of the Fajr prayer, pray one rakah, and that will be the witr for all the rakah which you have prayed. Narrated Ubadullah bin Abdullah bin Umar, a man called the Prophet, peace be upon him, while he was in the mosque. Narrated Abu Waqid al Laythi, may Allah be pleased with him, while Allah's Messenger, peace be upon him, was sitting in the mosque with some people. Three men came. Two of them came in front of Allah's Messenger, peace be upon him, and the third one went away. One of them found a place in the circle and sat there, while the second man sat behind the gathering, and the third one went away. When Allah's Messenger, peace be upon him, finished his preaching, he said, Shall I tell you about these three persons? One of them betook himself to Allah, and so Allah accepted him and accommodated him. The second felt shy before Allah, so Allah did the same for him and sheltered him in his mercy, and did not punish him. While the third turned away his face from Allah and went away. So Allah turned his face from him likewise. Chapter on to lie flat on the back in the mosque. Narrated Abad bin Tamim that his uncle said, I saw Allah's messenger peace be upon him lying flat on his back in the mosque, putting one of his legs over the other. Narrated Sa'id bin al-Musayyib that Umar and Uthman used to do the same. Chapter on if a mosque is built on a road, it should not be a cause of harm for the people. Narrated Aisha May Allah be pleased with her, the wife of the Prophet, peace be upon him. I had seen my parents following Islam since I attained the age of puberty. Not a day passed but the Prophet, peace be upon him, visited us, both in the mornings and evenings. My father, Abu Bakr, thought of building a mosque in the courtyard of his house, and he did so. He used to offer prayers and recite the Qur'an in it. The pagan women and their children used to stand by him, and look at him with surprise. Abu Bakr was a soft-hearted person and could not help weeping while reciting the Qur'an. The chiefs of the Quraysh pagans became afraid of that, that is, that their children and women might be affected by the recitation of the Qur'an. Chapter on to offer a salah, the prayers, in a mosque situated in a market. Ibn Aoun offered prayers in a mosque situated in a house and the gate used to be closed while they were inside. Narrated Abu Huraira, may Allah be pleased with him, the Prophet peace be upon him said, The salah, prayer, offered in congregation is twenty-five times more superior in reward to the salah offered alone in one's house or in a business center. Because if one performs ablution and does it perfectly, 
and then proceeds to the mosque with the sole intention of offering a salah. Then for each step which he takes towards the mosque, Allah upgrades him a degree in reward and crosses out, forgives one sin at each step till he enters the mosque. When he enters the mosque, he is considered in salah as long as he is waiting for the salah and the angels keep on asking for Allah's forgiveness for him and they keep on saying, O Allah, be merciful to him. O Allah, forgive him as long as he keeps on sitting at his praying place and does not pass wind. See Hadith number 647. Chapter on to clasp one's hands by interlocking the fingers in the mosque or outside the mosque. Narrated Ibn Amr or Ibn Amr, may Allah be pleased with them, the Prophet peace be upon him clasped his hands by interlacing his fingers. Narrated Abdullah that Allah's Messenger peace be upon him said, O Abdullah bin Amr, what will be your condition when you will be left with the sediments of worst people? They will be in conflict with each other. Narrated Abu Musa, may Allah be pleased with him, the Prophet peace be upon him said, A faithful believer to a faithful believer is like the bricks of a wall, reinforcing each other. While saying that, the Prophet peace be upon him clasped his hands by interlocking his fingers. Narrated Ibn Sirin, Abu Huraira, may Allah be pleased with him said, Allah's Messenger peace be upon him led us in one of the two Isha prayers. Abu Huraira, May Allah be pleased with him named that prayer, but I forgot it. Abu Huraira, may Allah be pleased with him added, He offered two rakah and then finished the salah prayer with taslim. He stood up near a piece of wood lying across the mosque and leaned on it in such a way as if he was angry. Then he put his right hand over the left and clasped his hands by interlocking his fingers and then put his right cheek on the back of his left hand. The people who were in hassle left the mosque through its gates. They wondered whether a salah, the prayer, was reduced, and amongst them were Abu Bakr and Umar. But they hesitated to ask the Prophet peace be upon him. A long-handed man called Dhul Yadain asked the Prophet peace be upon him, O Allah's Messenger, have you forgotten or has a salah been reduced? The Prophet peace be upon him replied, I have neither forgotten nor has the salah been reduced. The Prophet peace be upon him added, Is what Dhul Yadain has said true? They, the people said, Yes, it is true. The Prophet peace be upon him stood up again and led the salah, completing the remaining salah forgotten by him and performed the slim and then said, Allahu Akbar. And then he did a prostration as he used to prostrate or longer than that. He then raised his head saying, Allahu Akbar. He then again said, Allahu Akbar and prostrated a second time, as he used to prostrate, or longer than that. Then he raised his head and said, Allahu Akbar. The sub-narrator added, I think that they asked Ibn Sirin whether the Prophet peace be upon him completed the prayer with the slim. He replied, I heard that Imran bin Hussein had said. Then he, the Prophet peace be upon him, did the slim. Chapter on the mosques which are on the way to al Madina and the places where the Prophet peace be upon him had offered salah, prayers. Narrated Fudayl bin Sulaiman, may Allah be pleased with him, Musa bin Uqba said, I saw Salim bin Abdullah looking for some places on the way and offered salah, prayers there. He narrated that his father used to offer salah there and had seen the Prophet peace be upon him offering salah at those very places. Narrated Nafir on the authority of Ibn Umar, may Allah be pleased with them, who said, I used to offer salah at those places. Musa, the narrator, added, I asked Salim, on which he said, I agree with Nafir concerning those places, except the mosque situated at the place called Sharaf al -Rawha. These are hadith, numbers 484, 485, 486, 487, 488, 489, 490, 492, narrated by Abdullah bin Umar, may Allah be pleased with them, is about the various places on the way from al Madina to Mecca, where the Prophet peace be upon him offered salah, prayers, and their locations. It is not possible to translate. Narrated Abdullah bin Umar, may Allah be pleased with them, the Prophet peace be upon him while approaching Mecca used to dismount at the Thulwa, near Mecca, 
and stay the night there till the morning, and then perform the morning salah, prayer. The musallah, praying place of Allah's Messenger, was over the big hillock, and not at the mosque, which was built later, but at a place lower than that, over the big hillock. See Hadith number 484. Chapter on the Sutra of the Imam is also a Sutra for those who are behind him. Footnote Sutra, an object like a pillar, wall or stick, a spear, etc., the height of which should not be less than a foot, and it should be in front of a person offering salah, prayers, to act as a symbolic barrier between him and the others. Narrated Ibn Abbas, may Allah be pleased with them, once I came riding a she-ass, when I had just attained the age of puberty. Allah's Messenger, peace be upon him, was offering the prayer at Mina, with no wall in front of him, and I passed in front of some of the rows. There I dismounted, and let she-ass lose the grace, and entered the row, and nobody objected to me about it. Narrated Ibn Umar, may Allah be pleased with them, whenever Allah's Messenger, peace be upon him, came out on Eid day, he used to order that a harba, a short spear to be planted in front of him as a sutra for his salah, prayer. And then he used to offer salah facing it with the people behind him. And he used to do the same while on a journey. After the Prophet peace be upon him, this practice was adopted by the Muslim rulers who followed his sunnah, legal ways. Narrated Aun bin Abi Juhayfa, I heard my father saying, The Prophet peace be upon him led us and offered a two raka vuhr prayer then a Turaqa Asr prayer at al Badha with an Anaza planted in front of him as a Sutra, while women and donkeys were passing in front of him beyond that Anaza. See Fath al Bari, Volume 2, page 120. Chapter on What Should Be the Distance Between the Person Offering Salah, Prayer, and the Sutra. Narrated Sahal bin Sa'ad, may Allah be pleased with him, the distance between the Musallah praying place of Allah's Messenger, peace be upon him, and the wall was just sufficient for a sheep to pass through. Narrated Salama, may Allah be pleased with her. The distance between the wall of the mosque and the pulpit, by the sight of which the Prophet, peace be upon him, used to offer prayers, was hardly enough for a sheep to pass through. Chapter on to offer a salah, the prayer using a harba, a short spear as a sutra. Narrated Abdullah, May Allah be pleased with him. The Prophet, peace be upon him, used to get a harba planted in front of him as a sutra and offer a salah, the prayer behind it. Chapter on to offer a salah, the prayer using an anaza, a spear headed stick, as a sutra. Narrated Aun bin Abi Juhayfa that he had heard his father saying, Allah's Messenger, peace be upon him, came to us at midday and water was brought for his ablution. He performed ablution and led us in Zuhr and Asr prayer with an Anaza planted in front of him as a sutra, while women and donkeys were passing beyond it. Narrated Anas bin Malik, may Allah be pleased with him, whenever the Prophet peace be upon him went for answering the call of nature, I and another boy used to go after him with a staff, a stick, or an Anaza, and a tumbler of water. And when he finished from answering the call of nature, we would hand over the tumbler of water to him. Chapter on Sutra for the prayer in Mecca and elsewhere. Narrated Abu Juhayfa, may Allah be pleased with him, Allah's Messenger, peace be upon him, came out at midday and offered a two raka zuhr and asr prayers at al Badha, and an anaza was planted in front of him as a sutra. He performed ablution, and the people took the remaining water left after his ablution and rubbed their bodies with it. Chapter on to offer a salah, the prayer facing a pillar. Umar said, The people offering a salah, the prayer, have got more right to pray behind the pillars of the mosque than those who are talking. When Umar saw a person, salah, prayer between two pillars, he brought him close to a pillar and told him to pray behind it. Narrated Yazid bin Abi Ubaid, I used to accompany Salama bin al -Aqwa. may Allah be pleased with him, and he used to offer the salah prayer behind the pillar, which was near the place where the Qur'ans were kept. I said, O Abu Muslim, I see you always seeking to offer a salah the prayers behind this pillar. He replied, 
I saw Allah's Messenger, peace be upon him, always seeking to offer a salah, the prayers, near that pillar. Narrated Anas, may Allah be pleased with him, I saw the most famous people amongst the companions of the Prophet, peace be upon him, hurrying towards the pillars at the Maghrib prayer before the Prophet, peace be upon him, came for the prayer. Chapter on to offer non-congregational asala, the prayers between the pillars. Narrated Ibn Umar, may Allah be pleased with them. The Prophet, peace be upon him, entered the Kaaba along with Usama bin Zayd, Uthman bin Talha, and Bilal, and remained there for a long time. When they came out, I was the first man to enter the Kaaba. I asked Bilal, where did the Prophet, peace be upon him, offered prayers? Bilal replied, between the two front pillars. Narrated Nafir, Abdullah bin Umar said, Allah's Messenger, peace be upon him, entered the Kaaba along with Usama bin Zayd, Bilal, and Uthman bin Talha al-Hajabi, that is, the one who keeps the key of the gate of the Kaaba and is considered as a servant of the Kaaba, and closed the door and stayed there for some time. I asked Bilal when he came out, what did the Prophet, peace be upon him, do? He replied, he offered salah, prayer with one pillar to his left and one to his right, and three behind. In those days, the Kaaba was supported by six pillars. Malik said, there were two pillars on his, the Prophet's, right side. Chapter on Offer Prayers at Any Place Inside the Kaaba Narrated Nafir, whenever Abdullah entered the Kaaba, he used to go ahead, leaving the door of the Kaaba behind him. He would proceed on till the remaining distance between him and the opposite wall was about three cubits. Then he would offer prayer there, where the Prophet, peace be upon him, had offered salah, prayers, as Bilal informed me. Ibn Umar said, It does not matter for any of us to offer prayers at any place inside the Garba. Chapter on to offer a salah, prayers facing a rahila, mount, a camel, a tree, or a camel saddle, etc., as a sutra. Narrated Nafir, Ibn Umar said, The Prophet, peace be upon him, used to make his she-camel sit across and he would offer salah, prayer, facing it, as a sutra. I asked, what would the Prophet, peace be upon him, do if the she-camel was provoked and moved? He said, he, peace be upon him, would take its camel saddle and put it in front of him and offer salah, facing its back part, as a sutra. And Ibn Umar used to do the same. This indicated that one should not offer salah except behind a sutra. Chapter on to offer a salah, the prayer facing a bed. Narrated Aisha, may Allah be pleased with her, do you make us, women, equal to dogs and donkeys? While I used to lie in my bed, the Prophet, peace be upon him, would come and offer salah, prayer, facing the middle of the bed. I used to consider it not good to be in front of him in his salah, so I used to slip away slowly and quietly from the foot of the bed till I got out of my blanket. Chapter on the person offering salah, prayer, should repulse that person who tries to pass in front of him. While sitting in tashahud, a specific sitting position adopted by a person during the salah, prayer, and while in the Kaaba, Ibn Umar repulsed a man who tried to pass in front of him. He used to say, use force if that person refuses to retreat. Narrated Abu Salih his saman I saw Abu Sa'id al-Khudri, may Allah be pleased with him, offering salah, prayer on a Friday, behind something which acted as a sutra. A young man from Bani Abu Mu'ayyid wanted to pass in front of him, between him and the sutra, but Abu Sa'id repulsed him with a push on his chest. Finding no alternative, he again tried to pass, but Abu Sa'id pushed him with a greater force. The young man abused Abu Sa'id and went to Marwan, and lodged a complaint against Abu Sa'id. Abu Sa'id followed the young man to Marwan who asked him, O Abu Sa'id, what has happened between you and the son of your brother? Abu Sa'id said to him, I heard the Prophet peace be upon him saying, if anybody amongst you is offering salah behind something as a sutra, and somebody tries to pass in front of him, between him and the sutra, then he should repulse him if he refuses. He should use force against him, for he is a shaitan. Chapter on the sin of a person who passes in front of a person offering salah, prayer. 
narrated Busar bin Sa'id that Zayd bin Khalid, may Allah be pleased with him, sent him to Abu Juhaym to ask him what he had heard from Allah's Messenger, peace be upon him, about a person passing in front of another person who was offering salah, prayer. Abu Juhaym replied, Allah's Messenger, peace be upon him, said, If the person who passes in front of another person in salah knew the magnitude of his sin, he would prefer to wait for forty days, months, or years, rather than to pass in front of him. Abu Nadar said, I do not remember exactly whether he said forty days, months, or years. Chapter on a man facing a man while offering salah, prayer. Uthman disliked to face a praying person if it diverted its attention. Zaid bin Thabit said, But if it does not have such an effect, a man does not cancel the salah, prayers, of another man. Narrated Aisha, may Allah be pleased with her, the things which annul a salah, the prayers, were mentioned before me. They said, Prayer is annulled by a dog, a donkey, and a woman, if they pass in front of the praying people. I said, You have made us, that is, women, dogs. I saw the Prophet, peace be upon him, offering salah, prayers, while I used to lie in my bed between him and the qibla. Whenever I was in need of something, I would slip away, for I disliked to face him. Chapter on to offer a salah, the prayer behind a sleeping person. Narrated Aisha, may Allah be pleased with her, the Prophet peace be upon him used to offer a salah, prayer, while I used to sleep across in his bed, in front of him. And then, when he wanted to pray with her, he would wake me up and I would pray with her. Chapter on to offer nawafil, non-obligatory prayers behind a sleeping woman. Narrated Aisha, may Allah be pleased with her, the wife of the Prophet, peace be upon him. I used to sleep in front of Allah's Messenger, peace be upon him, with my legs opposite his qibla, facing him. And whenever he prostrated, he pushed my feet and I withdrew them, and whenever he stood, I stretched them. Aisha, may Allah be pleased with her, added, In those days, there were no lamps in the houses. Chapter on whoever said, Nothing annuls a salah, the prayer, that is nothing of what others do, not the praying person himself. Narrated Aisha, may Allah be pleased with her, the things which annul prayer were mentioned before me, and those were a dog, a donkey, and a woman. I said, You have compared us, women, to donkeys and dogs. By Allah, I saw the Prophet, peace be upon him, offering prayers while I used to lie in my bed between him and the qibla. Whenever I was in need of something, and I disliked to sit and trouble the Prophet, peace be upon him, then I would slip away by the side of his feet. Narrated Aisha, may Allah be pleased with her, the wife of the Prophet, peace be upon him. Allah's Messenger, peace be upon him, used to get up at night and offer prayers, while I used to lie across between him and the Qibla on his family's bed. Chapter on if a small girl is carried on one's neck during a salah, the prayer. Narrated Abu Qafada al-Ansari, may Allah be pleased with him, Allah's Messenger, peace be upon him, was offering salah, prayer, and he was carrying Umama, the daughter of Zainab, the daughter of Allah's Messenger, peace be upon him, and she was the daughter of Aras bin Rabi bin Abd shams When he prostrated, he put her down, and when he stood, he carried her on his neck. Chapter on to offer salah, prayer, facing a bed occupied by a menstruating woman. Narrated Maymuna bint al-Harith, may Allah be pleased with her, My bed was beside the musalla, praying place of the Prophet, peace be upon him, and sometimes his garment fell on me while I used to lie in my bed. Narrated Maymuna, may Allah be pleased with her, the Prophet, peace be upon him, used to offer prayers while I used to sleep beside him during my periods, menses, and in prostrations his garment used to touch me. Chapter on Is it permissible to touch or push one's wife in prostration in order to prostrate properly? Narrated Aisha, may Allah be pleased with her, it is not good that you people have made us women equal to dogs and donkeys. No doubt, I saw Allah's Messenger, peace be upon him, offering prayers while I used to lie between him and the Qibla. And when he wanted to prostrate, he pushed my legs and I withdrew them. 
chapter on a woman can remove troublesome or offensive things from a person in salah, prayer. Narrated Amr bin Maymun, Abdullah bin Mas'ud said, While Allah's Messenger, peace be upon him, was offering salah, prayer, near the Kaaba, there were some Quraysh people sitting in a gathering. One of them said, Don't you see this Mura'i, the one who does deeds just to show off, who amongst you can go and bring the dung, blood, and the abdominal contents, intestines, etc., of the slaughtered camels of the family of so-and-so, and then wait till he prostrates and put that in between his shoulders. The most rest amongst them, Uqba bin Abi Mu'ayth, went and brought them, and when Allah's Messenger, peace be upon him, prostrated, he put them between his shoulders. The Prophet, peace be upon him, remained in prostration, and they laughed so much so that they fell on each other. A passerby went to Fatima, the daughter of the Prophet, peace be upon him, who was a young girl in those days. She came running, and the Prophet, peace be upon him, was still in prostration. She removed them, the abdominal contents of the camel, and cursed at the Quraysh on their faces. When Allah's Messenger, peace be upon him, completed his prayer, he said, O Allah, destroy the infidels of Quraysh. He said so thrice and added, O Allah, destroy Amr bin Hashim, Utba bin Rabi'ah, Shayba bin Rabi'ah, Al-Walid bin Utba, Umayyah bin Khalaf, Uqba bin Abi Mu'ith, and Umara bin Al-Walid. Abdullah added, By Allah, I saw all of them dead in the battlefield on the day of Badr, and they were dragged and thrown in the Qalib, a well at Badr. Allah's Messenger, peace be upon him, then said, Allah's curse has descended upon the people of the Qalib.